Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Doorstep History, which today comes from the new Ladywood Leisure Centre on the site of the former Monument Road swimming baths. We're looking at the construction of the new Ladywood Leisure Centre pool, which will be the third such pool on the site. Now earlier this year, during excavation, they discovered a well which was used to pump water into the pool that was constructed in 1883. So we had a specialist uh, camera team come down, normally involved in drain surveys. They used a similar piece of equipment that they could drop down on a flexible cable with um, a dome mounted camera at the bottom of it and it drops down and they can feed it through and it will give you some various information um, depth um, uh, and obviously a picture all around they can control it somewhat not necessarily very accurately um, in terms of being able to make it directional and um, we have a cap engineered by our consultants that sits over the top of the well seals it off to stop water ingress penetration and gas escaping in an uncontrolled fashion so we're actually standing in the base of the pool now and obviously won't be able to do this in a few months time but we're actually standing on top of where the cap was for the well thing aren't we? That's right and below, below us is the, as you say the well shaft and that still extends down into the ground um, and the surrounding concrete structure now is the swimming pool. How much water will be in here when it's uh, full? When it's full it's between 525 and 550 million litres of water. That's an astonishing amount of water and how often does that need to get changed? Um, it shouldn't ever need to get changed unless there's something that we need to empty the pool for in the future or the operator needs to empty the pool, it'll just get filtered out in the filtration system. There's sumps at the bottom that pull the water out, passes it through the filters in the balance tank in the plant room area and then back into the balance tank and then through the walls of the pool into the outlets that you can see behind us and on the wall behind the camera. Now the original bath here was built in 1883 and was finally demolished in 1940 to be replaced by the baths here and they closed in 1992 and were demolished two years later. Many people I've interviewed over the years have fond memories of using the baths when it was more popular as a washing baths rather than a swimming pool. The washing baths part very really good. They had the, they had the assistance to, uh, as one come out, go in and give the bath a good scrub round and then they'd fill the water up. You had no control over the water that was put in, but of course it was made nice and and uh, and uh, that was quite good. There was only a copper to go in there, you know. I mean, there's no excuse for uh, people being uh, without a bath. You know, I mean, I know we only used to go once a week, but I mean, uh, at least you did get a bath once a week, so you're quite happy at that. I'm at the site of the new Ladywood Leisure Centre on Monument Road, on the site of a bath which dates back to the 1880s. A very significant bath and the great memories of people in Ladywood have used the bath here over the years. And the first, the first time I went in the deep, when, when she could see you could swim, she said, now you come and try up in the deep end. So she used to have a long pole with a big loop on, and she put this loop over you. And then you used to go into the water and start swimming, but she got this, she got this loop round you in case you should go down. But she wanted to see you could swim. And that's how the first time I went to the deep end on the end of this stick in the rope. Mm. So I was all right swimming. Yeah, I went to the Monument Road swim baths from Owsley Street. Um, and we all got into the water. Well, uh, our family, we couldn't afford bathing costumes. So I don't know if you know England shoe shops in Birmingham. Mrs England, she knitted me a bathing costume. And of course, all being wool, when I got in the water, it all went down to the bottom. It still have my shoulders, but the weight of it, 
took it right round my waistline and I couldn't move. I couldn't swim because the costume weighed me down. <laughs> my fingers all went dead and my toes. And I went nowhere, so in the end I didn't learn to swim. The biggest thrill I had was when I'd done a few errands, well I'd done a few jobs and I'd got sixpence to go in the first class because you got a shower as well. That's right. Yeah. And you, you went past all the people that paid threatens to go in the ordinary. I never had enough money First for class, <laughs> yeah. oh you did probably. Class, yeah. oh you did probably. I used to treat myself if, I'd, if, I, if I was a bit well off and have a first class because they hadn't used to look the door on the first class. You just about get wet in the third class, yeah. and the door would go, bang, 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 come on, come on, get some of that. You'd only got wet. Because yeah. <laughs> there was that many people queuing. Do you remember that big queue up that passage oh, yeah. Yeah. on yeah. the bench? I've queued up myself there. Yeah. Well, there must yeah. have been six or 7,000 people waiting to queue up to have a bath. I mean, oh, the, yeah. the, the, the amount oh, of people queuing up. I mean, Friday night was the one, Friday and Saturday and Sunday. This one, Lizzie Dipper, the name was. She got herself, fancied herself, she could swim. She gets up into the deep end, of course. Damn, she goes. Well, one of the girls with us, we call the prefect, she goes in the water to help to get her out, and she's pulling her down then. So, Miss Baggs, that was our teacher, she was a flash teacher and all, always dressed nice. Miss Baggs was there, and she dived in, clothes and all, and she loosed them, and she fetched Lizzie Giffle out because the other could get herself out. And then, of course, Miss Baggs was all dripping wet, and the worst girl, they were getting dressed, and they were running home to see what they could get off their mothers for Miss Baggs to dress in. By the early 1990s, the baths was in a poor state and it was closed in 1992 and demolished in 1994. Numerous plans were discussed for the replacement. Now in 1994, during the demolition, there's a great campaign from local residents and school children and I must declare an interest in this because I helped to organise some of the campaigns, particularly through the schools, to have a new baths built. Well, the council promised at the time they would rebuild it and now, 25 years later, it's finally happening. Here's a look back at some of the aspects of that campaign. The Ladywood Smearing Baths here on Monument Road closed on the 1st of February 1992. There was an outcry from local residents. The first question to be asked is, why did it close? The latest structural report noted that the amount of chlorides in the structure had increased and led to an advanced deterioration of the reinforcements. This had been an increasing problem. It has been a well-known fact that the baths have been in a bad condition for many years. The report said that to continue to use the baths could be a safety hazard as the structure is no longer totally safe. It is estimated that up to £350,000 would be needed to be spent just to patch up and repair the worst part of the baths. This money is not available and as a result it was recommended that the baths be closed. The second question appears to be, what is to be done to replace it? The citywide bath strategy has identified the need for a 50 metre pool to meet local and national needs. Three years ago, the award-winning Ladywood Bugle revealed that Ladywood is the most favoured choice for the new baths. The baths could be built on land adjacent to the Ladywood Arts and Leisure Centre. But an uphill struggle is faced if the city is to raise the necessary cash. 25 million was mentioned, but that was three years ago. In the meantime, Ladywood is likely to be left without a baths. Ironically, the government is unlikely to fund the project, even though Manchester has been given £55 million to fund its Olympic bid. The cash flow has seemed to dry up for Birmingham. In the meantime, this cash-saving rescue plan for Monument Road has been drawn up by architect Joe Holyoke. It is known as a Clyclan Dome and could be erected over the present pool. The existing structure would be demolished, leaving the tank. 
A similar structure in Edinburgh was erected for the 1986 Commonwealth Games and is now used as a tennis centre. This time of structure has a lifespan of up to 20 years. The dome would cost an estimated £250,000, cheaper than patching up the present structure. This includes the cost of the demolition of the present structure, a cost which would also be incurred if the baths were demolished. The plan has received widespread support. Carl Rice has called for an effective, reasonable, constructive campaign to support the plan. It's to be hoped that the plan can go ahead and the baths can reopen. Meanwhile, the population has had to travel to other swimming baths. Twelve of the Lakeland schools use Monument Road. All of them have been fitted up with other facilities. But, as we shall see, not all of the new facilities are adequate and people are already missing Monument Road. This is what's happened at one school. First lesson of the day at St George's School is to get changed into a swimming kit. It saves valuable time while waiting for the coach to take them to the pool at the Martinol Teacher Centre in Harborne. Other school groups travel as far as Newtown and Spark Hill. It's not ideal, but better than nothing. Pupils are fitted in around other groups and at times that are often inconvenient. It is to be hoped that this will not happen next year when new timetables are drawn up. The coach journey is tedious and pupils get frustrated by the lack of speed. It takes too long to get there on the coach. What's the time? It's nearly half the now. We've got one minute to get there before we've got to be in the pool. We should be there by now. There's no time to lose. It's off the coach, and after a quick change, it's straight into the pool. The St George's pupils are grateful for a pool to swim in, but facilities are not as good as Monument Road. The pool is small, and those who can swim are well restricted by the less confident swimmers who occupy half of the pool. The worst problems occur when pupils return to the changing rooms. Another group is in the showers, changing. There is not enough room in the cubicles. This means that the swimmers from St George's cannot have a shower. There is no comfort either. This is the full extent of the male changing room. The journey back takes up more valuable time from school-based lessons. It's not nice when you come back from the swim and the coach because we're not all dry properly and everywhere's wet. It's not lunch time yet, but the coach journey has taken a long time. In her office, head teacher Jackie Hughes signs the latest swimming certificates. She has another worry about the coach and the cost of travelling. Funding for the coach could become a problem. Currently, this is met by the LEA, but it's unlikely that that's going to continue for the future. So that will come out of the school's budget and an already very hard press budget will have even further strain on it. 
Also, there is further strain in Brookfields, where some of the 180 pupils miss half an hour's lunch to go swimming at natural swimming baths. At the oratory, 60 went swimming, but now there is only room for 30 pupils. Head teacher Frank Farrell is not impressed that pupils are denied an important facility. Some things are so important we ought to be able to take them for granted. I believe giving children and grown-ups the opportunity to learn to swim and to give them confidence in water is very important and I support any efforts that are made to prolong the life of Monument Road Baths. That's a view echoed by most people we have spoken to. The Cloycan Dome must be seriously considered. Local officials of Reckoncombe must fight on our behalf. The door of consultation should be kept open. Or will the doors just shut in the community's face? First tonight, the news that TNT may be moving. Yes, that's right, because a multi-million pound regeneration project is set to transform our site. Because we're still waiting to find out if a sewer port is going to be built in the area. We have been campaigning for a new swimming pool for years. I know that the building was here because I've seen pictures and videos taken at the time also shows us what it was like. And we've just heard that Monument Road Swimming Baths is to close. That was ten years ago. At the time, there was a plan drawn up for an Olympic-sized pool. It would seem that the TNT newsroom really would be in the deep end. After ten years of talking about it, a pool could be built in Ladywood after all. This is said to be the council's preferred site. But now the council needs £40 million. Pounds. We've had our hopes built up in the past. We'll believe it when we see it. Cameron Morris, TNT News, at the site of our Olympic swimming pool. Possibly. Yeah, um, originally in 2013 the, the pool was uh, to be located uh, on the island of, of Port Loop. Um, since then uh, the city's aspirations uh, have expanded to create a bigger, more, things, more exciting facility for the neighbourhood. So uh, the pool is now an uh, eight lane, 25 metre competition pool with saunas, gyms. Uh, obviously it needs, it's bigger. So the location's moving from the centre of the scheme uh, out near the middle way uh, and it will be a real positive and benefit for not just Ladywood but the, but the city and it will be well connected on the middle way in, into the city. I'm at the new Ladywood Leisure Centre where fantastic progress has been made on building the new swimming pool and fitness centre. Now today is a significant day because Today the main pool has actually been tested with water being put into it for the very first time. So let's go and have a look. Now it's reckoned there are around 10,000 of these tiles on the floor and another 3,000 of them have been put around the walls. This is quite an historic moment for the baths because as soon as the man over there has finished mopping the floor and making it look spotless, the water will start to trickle in. When it's full, the bath will hold up to 550 million litres of water. That's almost 120 million gallons, which is roughly equivalent to about 1,950 million cups of water. This new building replaces the former Monument Road Baths, which was demolished in 1994, and the land has been derelict for the last 25 years. The water seems to be flowing uh, quite freely now, Matt, but how long is it going to take to fill the whole uh, tank? Um, it should take around three days. Three all days? Being well. Yeah, wow, just three amazing, days. Isn't it, yeah, yeah. Yeah. it must be fantastic for you to see your project coming to fruition. Yeah, it is definitely. Um, it's quite a nice achievement now to be able to see the water coming into the pool. So yeah, it's, a, it's a good achievement on behalf of the team as well. Brilliant. The whole pool itself should be open by the late summer. We look forward to seeing you 
in the new baths when they open. Thank you. So that's it from this edition of Doorstep History. Very much hope you've enjoyed watching the programme and join us again soon.